Hey, um, this is Pete Croft again. We're going to be doing Aorta and IVC this time around um, for you all. Um, I appreciate any questions or feedback as always. You can send me an email or uh, just grab me in the department. Um, we're going to be talking about Aorta first. Uh, so uh, basically here uh, with the Aorta, you it's important, um, and we always stress this, is you, you want to get a long axis view as well as short axis view. Uh, long axis is nice because it'll get those saccular aneurysms that you'll miss with a transverse view. Um, the transverse view is nice because you really need to go um, along the aorta all the way down to the bifurcation and the longitudinal view doesn't necessarily allow you to do that. Um, the transverse view also will give you more accurate measurements when you're measuring the size and diameter of the aorta. Uh, so this is a longitudinal view. Um, the big uh, teaching point here is to make sure you're not getting the IVC. So if you think of the anatomy, the IVC would generally be more on the right side of the patient, um, returning blood to the right atrium, whereas the aorta is going to be more on the left side of the patient, uh, giving blood down to the body. So when you get this longitudinal view, um, make sure that you're not getting the IVC, and you can do that um, by just moving your probe back and forth on the belly, um, as well as uh, confirming um, with a transverse view, and again, transverse view, you're going to be the, the landmark that you need to find every time is um, is your vertebral body, which is this structure here, a hyperechoic line uh, with significant shadowing behind it because it's a bone. So this is all bone here, and here's your aorta right in front. Um, here's your IVC, which kind of looks like a teardrop. It's going to be again on the right of the patient. The aorta is going to be here on the left of that. Um, and again, coming all the way down on the body, right to the, about the belly button where it'll split off right there. So down to the belly button where it about splits off. I know you're telling me that you know this is a skinny patient. We never have these patients. Um, so this is why you need to find some other tricks to help you get these images. Um, this trick um, is called the rescue view approach. And it's basically a right upper quadrant approach um, in which you're making your depth quite quite big here only 15 sometimes you need to go up to 20 24 and you're looking to find if you can imagine the probe it's again heads up here feet down here probe pointed towards probe marker pointed towards the head your beam is cast out across the belly cast across the belly here your aorta is going to be um, almost a it's not almost a coronal view so your aorta is going to be long long axis here. It's going to be way down at the bottom of your screen. Your IVC would be kind of uh, more anterior up along the liver. Your uh, aorta is going to be much more uh, deep in the abdomen. And this is a nice trick for obese patients to put the probe called the lateral approach to finding the aorta. It can give you a sense of whether that aorta is big. It's not perfect by any means, but it's a good escape uh, mechanism. Also, uh, with lots of gas in the belly, just take your be patient and uh, do short little um, pressure points on the belly. Just push down, up and down, up and down, and try to move that air or gas out of the way. That can help you get a better image. Uh, in terms of measurement, you always want to measure outer to outer. Be generous with your measurements. It's better to over measure than under measure. So always outer to outer is the teaching. Here's a way um, to obtain the view of the uh, IVC. Um, this is the way I do it. There are uh, multiple different techniques. I go from a sub xiphoid. Again, that probe is flat on the belly, as Scott has it there, flat on the belly. And you're going to be looking right at the right atrium or right ventricle. Um, you could keep the heart in view the whole time. And as you twist the probe towards the marker, towards the head, as you twist the probe, you're looking at the screen, making sure the heart stays in view and you're capturing that IVC dumping right into the right side of the heart, right there. So twisting it, twisting it, IVC dumping into the heart, right there. Um, again, the aorta is going to be on the other side, so sometimes you'll see that, and you just have to move a little bit more to the patient's right to get the IVC. This is nice. You can see some hepatic vein um, emanating here right and coming right down into the IVC. Uh, in terms of measurements, uh, lots of recent studies have been done on looking at fluid responses, responsiveness and IVC measurement. 
Uh, my take on the whole um, controversy is is fairly black and white. I think that um, it can be useful at the extremes. So um, uh, a fluid responsive patient is going to have an extremely distensible or compressing IVC, so these walls would almost touch, whereas a fluid non-responsive patient is going to have a very plump IVC. Um, I look at it fairly black and white. You can do measurements, and this is how you do it. You do M mode, um, and you can compare the sizes, and you can look at percentage collapse. Um, that can get tricky, especially with ventilated patients, so I try to make it simple. I try to look at just, is it really plump, or is it really distensible or compressible? And I work um, on my patient from those uh, findings. Here's some pathologic cases. Uh, which are pretty neat with the aorta. Here's a close-up of a large um, aneurysm. Not too large, but a. Um, if you can see here, um, your uh, lumen is actually the A's, A to A, A prime, and then you have an aneurysmal component, which is uh, B to B prime, uh, which is 3.5 centimeters. So this um, is very concerning for an aortic aneurysm or a contained rupture. Um, uh, depending on the stability of your patient, uh, this patient needs either OR or CT imaging with vascular consult. This is a similar picture in a much bigger aneurysm, but again, you can see that lumen in the middle, or, and then the uh, corresponding false lumen. Um, here's a video representation of that. Notice the vertebral body, always get that in view. Uh, this is kind of a neat boat video. It shows the swirling of the blood and the lumen of the aorta, um, sort of an ominous swirl, so to speak. Um, here is uh, yet another clip. Uh, this is neat because it shows you the importance of coming all the way down with your transverse view. Here it just looks small, and then you come down a bit, and it just balloons up. If you had a long axis here, you'd have a tube, and the tube would suddenly get bigger. So that's what I was saying with the long axis and how important it is to get that if you can. Um, this looks like a bomb went off. This is actually a, a graft. This hyperechoic structure here is actually a previous surgical aortic graft, um, which has failed, and um, there has been rupture around it. And you can actually see the components. It's pretty heterogeneous, so this is probably some active blood here. Um, in this uh, false lumen. Um, here's a nice picture of a long axis, the dissection flap. You see this thing flapping here? That's not normal. So here's your, here's your walls of the aorta here, and there's your dissection flap, which is uh, crossing all the way up. Pretty large dissection flap. Um, the teaching here is if you see something like this, you should reflexively change to the cardiac probe and go look at the heart. Make sure there's no dissection that moves all the way up into the thorax and into the, car um, into the pericardium causing diffusion and shortness of breath or chest pain or whatever the patient's presenting with. Again, more pictures of the heart. This is a transverse view. Here's your vertebral body. A little blurry here, but this is it. This is your hyperechoic anterior portion and this is your uh, aorta with the dissection flap. Here's a nice picture. Aorta uh, is here. Vertebral body is here. Here's your flap. This little teardrop is your IVC. You can, uh, this picture is kind of neat because you can actually see a little mirror image from the dissection flap here um, in what appears to be the vertebral body um, here and then in here. So this is your flap. This isn't a flap in the vertebral body. It's just a uh, mirror um, artifact. <laughs> Close up. Nice longitudinal view, large dissection. Um, kind of talked about IVC utilization, but just to um, reiterate, I use it at the extremes, big, plump, non-fluid responsive, dynamic, compressible, yes, fluid responsive. Here's some examples of that. Pretty plump here, not much compressibility with respirations. Um, this patient probably is not going to respond much to fluid. If they are hypotensive, you can give it a trial um, and see how you go, but I think this patient's going to need a little bit more boost. As opposed to these patients here, 
I mean, the IVC is essentially kissing one another. This patient's fluid down and needs um, IV fluids. So thanks so much. Uh, I think next up is going to be nerve, nerve blocks. So we'll be getting to that soon. Thanks.